Welcome back to Mad Props. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Mad Props. We're going to have a little bit of a shorter episode today. Um, I have a lot of big things in the in the books, in the future. I don't know how to say it. Um, but I want to make sure I get an episode out there, so I decided to jump on, kind of recap how the last week went, because we had a really fun uh, experience that we get to uh, to go over and kind of go over last week's episode a little bit and maybe some other stuff going into that. So thank you for joining us for another episode of Mad Props. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, slash X, at Mad Props Pod to get everything Mad Props. Or if you want to follow Schnabel Studios, it's at Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Facebook, X slash Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, and subscribe on and, and subscribe and like this video on YouTube. I feel like every time I go through that, I'm getting a little uh, a little worse at it. <laughs> I'm getting a little worse at it every time I go through it. But um, please subscribe and like and all that stuff because we bring a lot of content out. And the more that you guys subscribe, like, and all that stuff, the more that we can put out there. Or we feel I feel like I should be putting out there. You know, the more we get, the more reaction we get, the more I feel like we should be putting stuff out there. So definitely go do that. If you haven't already, make sure you check out last week's episode of Mad Props. We had uh, the crew of Good Kid with a Pun. It's Good Kid. Good Guy with a Pun. Uh, come on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to mess that up. It's getting, it's getting late. It was a long weekend. Good Guy with a Pun come on and discuss their um, short film slash TV series pilot. Um, Julius Thomas returned. He's obviously always a great guest. Uh, Dimitri Milken was also here. He has been great. Um, he was great. Uh, it's a nice little uh, friendship that kindled out of that. And uh, yeah, it was it was really good. We talked about the episode or the show. We talked about the creation of it. We talked about um, how it went from idea to conceptualization to bringing on Julius to actually being filmed to now going into film festivals and winning awards. So it's a lot of fun. Definitely check that out. That was the last episode of Mad Props. So it'll be up in the corner somewhere. Um, probably already up in the corner if you're looking on YouTube right now, or you can just go to the last episode on Spotify. Also, just an update. And I'll probably have to put this on social media. I don't think I've done it yet. It's been brought to our attention recently that uh, some old episodes are no longer available on Spotify. This includes um, Darren Nefsey, Kid Quill, Jim Obergefell, um, a lot of old one, some of our bigger ones that were older have all been taken down for some reason. So we got to look into that. I'm hoping by the end of this week, or maybe if you're listening to this later in the week, it's already back up at this point. But if you're listening on Monday morning, we're hoping by the end of this week that we'll have all those episodes back up on Spotify and everywhere else. If they were taken down anywhere else. Honestly, I didn't even get the check because of what we're going to talk about uh, coming up on this episode. But so if you if you're looking for some of those old episodes, it, they may not be there right now, but we'll make sure they're back somehow, some way, even if we have to, even if we have to completely re-upload them, they'll be back uh, somehow, some way. So thank you guys for pointing that out, who did point that out, and uh, we'll make sure they get back up there. And, and if you decide, like, why would Spotify do that? Screw them. Well, you can go ahead and go to, uh, go to any other ones. They're on Apple Podcasts and they're on YouTube. They've never been taken off YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and check out all the episodes there. Um, most of them have video. So you can actually see the guests um, as we interview them virtually and stuff like that. So thank you for bringing that to attention. I want to bring it to everybody else's attention. And hopefully by the time this came out and you're going over there, you're going to be like, what is he talking about? They're all there. But I don't know if that's going to happen. So I wanted to make sure I brought it to the attention. So, like I said, today's going to be, this week's going to be a little bit shorter of an episode. I think we're going to highlight a little bit more of last week's podcast through this week, maybe at least once. Um, I'm really trying to help Julius and Dimitri push good guy with a pun um, as they do their media tours. So there may, you may see one. We'll see um, what they want to do as well. But we'll do some other stuff in social media and things like that as well. So I, off the top of my head, I don't have a list. Um, I didn't come in with a list. I, I usually do a list on these solo episodes. So maybe if I get one towards the end, I'll uh, <laughs> we'll do that. But I really, the only thing I really want to bring up on this episode um, this week was it was my birthday last week. 
Uh, last Tuesday was my birthday. I turned 31. That is now, I think, three birthdays we've had since with the podcast. We had uh, a couple sketching ups with it and then a couple mad props with it. So three or four uh, with birthdays. And this year we did, a, for my birth, actual birthday, we didn't do much. But for my birthday celebration, which happened last weekend, we decided to go to Fan Fest Dallas or Dallas Fan Fest or Dallas Fan Expo. Something like, I think it's Dallas Fan Expo. We decided to go to Dallas Fan Expo. Um, I got gifted the tickets from my parents because they're very nice and they wanted me to go enjoy my birthday. And we went to the Fan Expo and it was unbelievably fun. So I've I've been to a couple of Comic Con type things. Obviously, I did collect Con with Jason Page, and um, I've d- I done like some small comic, a very small Comic Con type things where not really big guests come out at all. But this one was really um, fun. It was really cool, and it had a lot of big names. A couple people that we got to meet. And I'll go a little bit more into detail. Um, Actually, why don't I just go through, because we didn't meet too, too many people. So why don't I just go through and talk about the people that we met? And, and there's some cooler stories that will get more time. We'll start with the the smaller stories. Um, on Friday, I got to meet Rob Paulson, who is someone I've been dying to get on Mad Props for a long time. Trying to get on Mad Props for a really long time. Just doesn't really usually have the time. For people that don't know, he did Pinky in the Brain, the Animaniacs. Um, he's Carl Weezer. He's he's a bunch of different voices that you've heard on TV. <laughs> he's a tremendously talented voice actor. Um, not much. We, I had a good conversation with him. Not much, you know, podcast worthy stuff other than I got to meet him. I got a photo with him. So that'll be on social media at some point this week. So if you want to see that, you could see that. Maybe maybe we'll do that one today instead of a reel. We'll have the photos from that. Uh, and then the next person I got to meet was um, Adam MacArthur, and he play he's in uh, Star vs. the Forces of Evil now for people that, I mean, if you just listened before, Darren Nefsey came on this podcast, and I know, I watched this whole show front to back because I seen a couple episodes and I really liked it, and we brought on Darren Nefsey, and we did the whole interview with her and everything, and uh, I, you know, we talked about the voice actor plays Marco, which is him, and one that plays Star, and which is Eden. Um, what's her last name? I can't remember her last name off the top of my head. I might be going a little slow because it's it's pretty late and uh, it was a long weekend. But um, I can't remember her last name. It's Eden something. Anyway, we talked about all the voice actors and stuff. I think off air, and it was really it was a really cool experience. And so I got to meet him. You know, he had a, he had a shorter line that day because it was Friday. And I, I, I go up to him. I was like, hey, man, it's great to meet you. I'm going to tell you right now, all this stuff that you have on your table right now, because he's big, he's big in anime now. He's a big anime actor. I was like, all this stuff you have on your table right now, all this anime stuff, I don't know any of it. I don't know a single thing, to be honest. But I um, have a podcast, which I had Darren Nefsey on. So I watched the whole series front to back and really studied it for when the interview came on. I say I really, I really liked your work. Like I think you did a really good job as Marco Diaz. Like I think you were able to really take that character and, and make him your own, but also like make him stand out from the rest. Of, you know all that stuff. And what was cool about this interaction, the reason I even bring it up on the podcast, is because it then didn't become about like it wasn't just strictly about like him and his work and like oh yeah you know that role meant so much to me it was this this no it was oh that's awesome i i love darren we were just texting the other day and he was telling me this thing about something about gravity falls how they're talking about coming back and i was like oh yeah you don't hear that every single year that disney wants gravity falls back and then he was like dude tell me more about this podcast like what is it what is it about why'd she come on and and i had a whole conversation about this podcast you're listening to right now with him and uh it really got me excited because like Every time you do something like these conventions, and people that have been to a bunch of them, you know, like you'll tell somebody about their work that you like, and like if you really meant something to you, like if it's someone that like is very has holds a deep meaning in your heart, you'll like kind of tell them that because this is your opportunity to do that, right? 
But most of the time, you'll be like, oh, man, I loved you as Marco Diaz. And they'll come back like, you know, that role, it was one of my favorite roles. I loved it. I wish we could bring it back. You know, it's it's just so good. And it merely made me prepare for the next role I took. And, and it's all kind of gone to them because what they're expecting is, like, for you to be like, I loved your role. And then hear their stories about the role. But – he can kind of tell. That's why when I went in there, I was like, listen, I don't know any of your anime stuff, but I liked you in this. Like, I thought you were really good in this. And then I told him the story following up of even how I watched it because it gives off the impression of, like, I'm just telling you, like, I, I didn't come up to this table because I'm like, I'm a huge, a huge fan, like the greatest fan of all time. Um, I, I just wanted to tell him how much I appreciate his work and tell him that, you know, Darren says – yeah, he's really good at his job, basically. And it was cool because then he didn't make the conversation about him, right? He made the conversation about myself and my podcast and how she came on and what it's about and what we do. And, like, we had, like, a full-on really cool conversation. And it actually continued on to the next person, which I, I've always disliked. I'm not going to lie. I've done a couple of these. And... um when I do these conventions, like the smaller ones, I really like going up to the celebrity ones that don't have anybody there and like just kind of chatting with them and talking with them and kind of learning about them. Cause like whether it's, you know, whether it's the biggest star in the world, I can't think of one off the top of my head. That's how tired I am. When it's the biggest star in the world or not, they're going to have some really cool stories for you because they've all been through the same thing. Like some people at a higher level, obviously, but they've all been through the same thing. So they're all going to have really cool uh, stories for you. So I like to go up and chat and chat them up and stuff like that. But when I do that, I try to stop or leave if someone ever comes up to the line because for two things, one, you know, they don't really have anyone there. So anyone that comes up to the line, you got to do, (laughs) you got to do something, right? And then two, I try not to do that because you're taken away from that next person's moment. So when I, he was kind of continuing the conversation and like, I was like, eh, like I, I, I told him, I was like, man, it was great to meet you and stuff like that. Like I kind of cut it off and like, I, whether it sounded rude, it didn't sound rude. Like, I, listen, I'm going to leave. But I, I kind of, you know, cut it off, even though he was down to keep talking because then he was going on to the next person and I don't want to be the guy that, ruins the moment for that next person so anyway that was friday that was a really cool moment uh this podcast maybe is listening he's listening right now and if you are thank you so much come on and talk about whatever you want (laughs) go on talk about whatever you want but anyway it was awesome that was an awesome thing from friday so saturday you know obviously on three-day convention saturday is the big day that's when everybody's there um my girlfriend mary and i met Susan Sarandon, which was awesome. Not too many crazy stories from that. Uh, we got something signed for my mom because she was the one that bought us the tickets. Um, I guess, uh, I guess I can give, I'll give two more stories and I'm actually going to give the Sunday story and then the Saturday story because the sen- the, the the Sunday story is just, I got, there's two of them. The first one is I got to meet, um, Alan Tudyk who many people know from Star Wars or from, um, I think he's played the lead in Firefly, and like they know from a bunch of different things that I don't know him from. I know him from, he's King Candy in Wreck-It Ralph, which Wreck-It Ralph is one of my favorite movies of all time, animated movies of all time. I know him from Star Wars The Force of Evil as well. He's Ludo, and he's uh, the star's dad, King. I don't remember what the king's name is. Um, He's also the Joker in the Harley Quinn series. Uh, He's the pastor in in Arrested Development, you know, for 10 episodes or whatever. He's uh, Anne's dad, the pastor, Anne's dad. So I know, obviously, Steve the Pirate in Dodgeball. And... um, you know, those are like my favorite roles of his. But uh, so I got to get a photo with him. I don't know where the photo is. It's somewhere. Um, I got to get a photo with him. Look on our Instagram. We'll have all the photos and everything up. I got a photo with him and it was amazing. And um, after I got the photo with him, like the professional photo op photo. And after the photo, I was like, well, I want to get it signed, like personalized and signed and stuff like that. So uh, the lines, let me tell you something. If you go to the Dallas Fan Expo, 
they better do something about them lines. The lines were ridiculous. They were bad. They were really, really bad. And uh, it was unfortunate. I missed a lot of panels that I would like to go to. I didn't get to see as many people as I really wished I could have uh, just because the line system was so poor. And it was like some people you were waiting for hours just to get a glimpse, basically. Um, and we had to, like, switch off. And, like, Mary would stand for a little bit. I'd stand for It was just bad. It was bad. Anyway, so... I get in line to see uh, to get it signed, and he had to leave at three forty-five. This is about two, no one, two o'clock. I'll say two o'clock, two thirty. He gets back, something like that. So we're in this huge line, hour and forty-five minutes. It's all we got to get through this huge line, and I'm towards the end of it. And I'm like, I'm not going to get this thing signed. I'm just happy. I got. I'm happy. I got my photo. I'm more of a photo person than a signature person. Um, I mean, you could just look behind me. If you're watching, I have a Josh Hamilton picture, but it's not signed or anything like that. Like, I'm much, much bigger on the on the photo with the person. Like, if they send me something, it's one thing, right? Like, if you sent me a photo, like, a, like Darren Nefsey's thing is signed, Scott Koblish's thing is signed, like, that's one thing. But, like, I'd rather get a photo with the person because... I think it's just like has more meaning for me. It really does. But if you can get the photos signed, it's like that's cool, right? Like, so that's what I wanted to do. So I waited in line to get the photo signed by, um, by Alan Tudyk, and I didn't think it was going to happen. But I was just happy to have the photo anyway. So the lines moving, lines moving, lines moving, lines moving, and I mean it's moving. He's gonna he's he's determined to get through this before three forty five. I'm like, all right, word, we're going to get this signed. This is awesome. Like, I'm, I'm happy. So I get to almost the beginning of the line. It was a long time. I'm not going to say the amount of time I waited in that line, but I did wait for a long time. And we're getting towards the beginning of the line. And I'm gonna t- I was going to tell him, be like, hey, listen, I loved you in Star. I loved you in like, all the things I just said. And I'm sitting there watching people as they go up in line. And, you know, they're saying, like, I loved you as King Candy. And then he'd be like, I'm King Candy, you know, like. um, And then they're like, I loved you as this. And then he'd do the voice or he'd say the line or whatever, right? And he was awesome about it. He was awesome about it, awesome about it, awesome about it. Like, on the picture, he'd sign, like, like, you know, King Candy's line, or he would sign, like, Steve the Pirate. Like, you know, he, he was really awesome with it. So anyway, it's coming up to me, and everyone's doing it. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's doing it. And I'm looking at him, and he's doing it, and he's doing it. And, you, I mean, the guy's got to be exhausted. He's been doing this for three days or two days. He was there, He was not there Friday. Doing it for two days. But he had the longest line on Saturday. He had to have a virtual queue where you took a, you took a card – he took a number to wait in line type of thing. It was nuts. Anyway, so finally, the person before me, like they loved King Candy. He wrote the King Candy line, and then it became my turn. And I was going to say all the stuff I was going to I was talking about before, about how much I love this, how much I love that. And I just go up to him, like, hey, man, how's it going? Great to meet you. He gives me a handshake. I'm like, great to meet you again. Um, how are you holding up? <laughs> and he, he like, put, he go, he's like doing this. He goes, Then he took a big breath, and I think maybe, maybe it's just because he was bringing emphasis onto it. But you know, reading him and and seeing how he took the breath and how he looked, I think it was more of just taking a breath of like, all right, I don't have to do a character here; I could just talk, <laughs> and that's all it really was. You know, it was a very quick conversation of like he's like, oh, I'm holding in. I was like, man, you, you're you're a popular guy. The lines are crazy. And uh, that must be awesome. He's like, yeah, it's too bad they have to cap it off. But, you know, it is what it is. And I'm glad everybody came out. I'm like, man, I'll tell you right now, we're all so thankful that you're here. And I thank you for being able to stick around and do something like this. He's like, uh, he's like, yeah, I don't remember the whole conversation. But that's basically the gist of it. The first part is definitely what happened. I said, how are you holding up? All the stuff I wanted to say, I thought about it the entire time I was in the line. I didn't say a damn thing. I just said, how are you holding up? And just the breath of fresh air made me laugh because it's just like, oh, I don't have to do a character. First time in two days. <laughs> He's an awesome guy. If you get a chance to meet him, I definitely uh, 
Definitely recommend it because he's awesome. Steve the Pirate, King Ludo, or uh, Ludo, King Candy, all these great characters. He's the man. Thank you so much. If this ever makes it to him, thank you so much for being there and, and doing that. So the big story, and this is what we're going to kind of close it out on, um, a short episode, short and sweet, baby. Um, this story I've told everyone so far. Um, it's my favorite story from it. It really made the whole weekend worth it. Even though the whole weekend was great, like even if the weekend sucked, this would have made it worth it. So we got to meet Marissa Tomei, who was – there was a list – I didn't even bring this up in the beginning. I had a list of three people I wanted to see. And the list didn't go one, two, three. It went one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, number one, I wanted to meet Henry Winkler. And he canceled the Thursday before. I was devastated. I was like, man, he's the only guy I really wanted to meet in the entire thing. <laughs> he's the only one I wanted to photo op with. He's the only one I wanted a signature from. He's the only one I wanted to talk to. Like, that's the guy. And he dropped so that was unfortunate, but it happens. Um, number th five, six, whatever, whatever the next one was, was Sam Raimi. Now, for Spider-Man fans, you know who Sam Raimi is, right? Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I'm not gonna sit there and be like, "Yeah, I love this ex this obscure film that you did." Like, no, I would have told him Spider-Man. I would have found a copy of Spider-Man the DVD and had him sign it, kind of thing. Um, but then he dropped. They're both out, right? So Marissa Tomei was the one right after Sam Raimi that I wanted to meet. Also, William Shatner was there, and he almost hit me with his rascal. He was on a little rascal. First of all, William Shatner's 93 years old. No idea. I had no idea he's 93 years old. Uh, but we were waiting in line for Susan Sarandon, and he was going to like the photo ops thing, and he was like zipping around on his little rascal. <laughs> he just drove right behind us, and he came like – an inch before hitting me. And I was like, and we, we all did like a triple take. We're like, is that William Shatner? It was pretty funny. Anyway. Um, so the two top two were gone. And so Marissa Tomei made her way to number one because the other two were out. And so there was, we were very excited. We got a photo opportunity with her. It is now the background of my phone. If you could see it, if you're watching it is the background of my phone. And, uh, we got it signed and everything. So let's give a little backstory about Marissa Tomei, and then we'll give back, and then we'll go into the story. So Mary graduated from law school, works for a law firm, you know, all that good stuff. I told her a while ago we should watch My Cousin Vinny, and we didn't watch it, we didn't watch it, and then eventually we tried to watch it. Something happened, like we purchased it digitally, and the sound was off or something like that. So... She couldn't watch it then. And then we, we finally watched it a couple months ago. And she loved it. Loved the movie. I, I knew she would. It's a great movie. It's one of my top films. Like, I love that movie. It's so good. And she loved Marissa Tomei in it. And since the day she watched that movie to this day, she quotes that film all the time. Especially the my biological clock is ticking like this. And... Which, which for people that like this show, if you don't want, if if you've listened to the show, it was the Alan Hahn thing. <laughs> Alan Hahn came on and he was talking about my biological clock is ticking like this, and it was one of our biggest reels at the time as well. Anyway, um, so she loves that line. Here we are, a few months later, we're going to this thing, and Marissa Tomei is going to be there, and so she was freaking out. So we do the photo op with Marissa Tomei, and. Um, Mary's super nervous. She's so excited to meet her, but she's super nervous because she wants to go in there. And as she's walking up, she wants to go, my biological clock is ticking like this, stomping on the ground and everything. And she's not going to, she's worried, she's worried, she's worried. And then eventually she gets, we get in there and she's like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And I'm egging her. I'm like, yeah, you should. Like, this is going to be amazing. You should definitely do it. So we, we get in there. It's our turn. Mary's walking to Marissa and she goes, my biological clock is ticking like this. Mary's doing that. And the minute Mary goes, my, by, and at that point, Marissa Tomei jumps in, and they both in unison do the my biological clock is ticking like this with the foot stomps in unison. Like, it's too bad they don't have phones in the area. 
because it would have been amazing, and I mean amazing, to have that on to have that on film, to have that to be able to watch back. Like for me, it's great because I'll always remember. And for Mary, it's great. She'll always remember. Like she did the the line she loves by Marissa Tomei with Marissa Tomei. And and and, and this goes for the when I Alan Tudyk one as well. So when you take pictures with these people, if you don't make them enjoy the moment, they usually kind of give you a smile, like, like a, a for people watching, you see it's like a no te- no teeth. I have to smile 6,000 times. I'm not going to smile too hard. But it, like when Mary did that, we got an amazing smile on Miss Marissa Tomei, mouth open and everything, because she was enjoying the moment. Like She had a really good interaction with a fan, and she enjoyed it. It wasn't just somebody walking in and taking a picture next, walking in and taking a picture next. Like She had an interaction with her. And Mary went on to keep talking with her and told her like she, you know, she, she's a lawyer and all this stuff. And Marissa's like, oh, my God, congratulations, all this stuff. It was great. It was an amazing amazing interaction and it was the best interaction of the entire thing like for me it was that and then the adam MacArthur, alan tudyk so for alan tudyk i went up and i kind of did the same thing i did at the table i said like how you doing man how's it going hope you're doing all right like i I just went up he didn't say anything but he had like a really good smile because someone came up and talked to him probably no one talks i can't imagine what talks to him what i imagine is people go up and they go like oh my god thank you so much and they leave I, I, it's fun because I'm excited to do this stuff. Like I was excited to meet these people, but I've done so many interviews and I've been blessed to be able to meet so many different people, um, that I don't like get super starstruck when I go up to these people. Um, not, not everyone does, but a lot of these people do it's something I notice. like they're meeting somebody that means so much in their life. And even when these people might mean so much to me, like I don't get nervous. I've met people that are like I've met the, a lot of people that are like huge in my life celebrity wise like not all of them not even close to not even the people at the top but there are people that I've like really admire their work and I've had whether it's virtual or in person like I've been able to meet these people and talk to these people so like when I meet people like that like Marissa Tomei like I'm not freaking out just because like I have this opportunity and it's amazing. Like when I meet Alan Tudyk, I'm not like freaking out because I've had opportunities like this to talk to people of his stature. And so I kind of like understand that you don't, I I not understand. I, I just don't freak out because the nerves aren't as, as clenching, you know? So that's really great. But those are just a couple of fun stories. Um, thank you guys so much for listening to Matt props. I'm glad that I was able to tell some stories. Shorter episode. I promise they won't be that short all the time. Um, it's just kind of late, very tired, and I want to make sure that um, we get more guests on. Actually, right after this, I'm not even going to go to sleep or anything. I'm going to put on some coffee or something, and I'm going to start getting some emails together so we could start we could start doing this up because I want to really get some guests on and, and get, get back to the roots. Get back to the roots. Sorry, I was looking at something. Guys, follow Mad Props on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and X slash Twitter at Mad Props Pod. We do a lot on there. We post almost every day. I think every, I think we're doing three to four days a week we post on there. We post a lot of good stuff. So definitely go check that out if you haven't already. And definitely follow Schnabel Studios. We post every day on Schnabel Studios just about. I don't know if we post on Sundays right now, but uh, Monday through Saturday we post every single day. So we just posted on Saturday. It was the uh, four year anniversary of me playing in the Canely League. For people that don't know, I played in a Madden football league where I streamed every game with Tommy Canely, the relief pitcher for the New York Yankees. Um, in that one, I had like I had this comeback. So it was the four year anniversary of the Canely League, and I had this amazing comeback in one of the games where I was playing the Browns. And at first, my friend Gio took the sticks, right? And I was like, dude, he plays Madden all the time. I'm like, dude, you're, you're going to be better at Madden than me. This is one of the top players. We were both undefeated, I'm pretty sure, both me. I was the San Francisco 49ers, and he was Cleveland Browns. And uh, I was like, I think you're going to be better than me. Why don't you take over? And, and he did all right, but then he kind of <laughs> he kind of like lost the lead, and we were losing. And I was like, all right, I'll take over the sticks. And we had this amazing comeback capped off by we were we were down 28-21, block a field goal, take it back to the house for the game-tying touchdown. 
go in the overtime and then have a walk off touchdown overtime. It was one of the best games I've ever played. There was a lot of really good games. I think we're going to start putting those on the YouTube. So that transitions right into it. Make sure you go like, and subscribe this video, like this video, subscribe to Schnabel studios, subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. And then, uh, <laughs> go, go check it out. We're going to, I think I'm going to drop those as a full playlist. Um, and because it was a really fun, just the highlights, just the, not the full games, but the highlights of them. Uh, we have, I have all of the highlights. I just found them the other day. That's why it was really fun that the the four year anniversary just came up. The first game of that, um, the first game of that uh, league was on June eighth, so two days ago. And actually, the comeback game was either four years ago today, which is the tenth, or yesterday, which is the ninth. I don't remember which one it was. Um, but it just was a lot of fun and, uh, definitely some, definitely got me through some of COVID. We only did one year and his friend, he had like a friend that was ridiculously good. And I played him three times. I was, he was the Cardinals and he was just ridiculously good. He beat me all three times. I came close with him once, but he crushed me the other two times and he crushed everyone. And then he won the league. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun for in case you're wondering about that league really quick. I was one of the top teams in the league, made the playoffs pretty easily. I was I think I ended up being nine and oh, my first loss was to Zach Britton, the former closer for the Yankees, a setup man for the Yankees, I should say closer for the Orioles. Um, but it was a lot of fun. So maybe I'll throw those on YouTube. So definitely go like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to see more of that. And we'll post some stuff about that as well because that was a lot of fun and it was, it'll be fun to throw back to that. Uh, anyway, make sure you follow Schnabel Studios at Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Facebook, X slash Twitter, like I said, right here on YouTube. Or you can find us on LinkedIn as well and TikTok. You can find us on all that stuff and go like and subscribe and communicate with us and tell us what you think. Uh, thank you guys for so much for no – well, let me try one more time. Thank you guys so much for coming back to another episode of Matt Props. We will see you next time um, on another episode. Hopefully we'll have a guest, maybe not. I don't know about next week, but the week after, I'm really hoping we have a guest. So let's hope we get more guests and stuff like that. Thank you guys so much. Not my smoothest of landings, but we will see you next time. Yeah, man, this, this was Mad Props. I need to go to bed. See you later.